Hi, I'm Marietta, an East Cobb estate planning attorney, Steve Worrell at Georgia State Plan Worrell Law. I wanted to wish you a happy President's Day and to discuss with you today the last will and testament of our founding father and first president, George Washington. I've uh, done a little research. I've located a website at mountvernon.org that has a great deal of information about George Washington's will. And you can actually read the text of the will on that website as well. Uh, it was interesting to me to learn that originally George Washington had two versions of his will. Uh, I believe they were both prepared on or around July 9th of 1799. And as he lay dying on December 14th, 1799, he directed his wife Martha to bring those two wills to him. He reviewed them both. He directed her to throw one of them into the fire and to keep the other one and safeguard it closely until after his death. Um, the wills provide a lot of insight into his, what's important to him, what, who the people of, of his life were important to him, and what the values that he had were. And he helped pass on those values with this will. <clears throat> now, he had acquired a lot of property during his lifetime. He had uh, townhouse lots in both Alexandria, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. He had some large tracts of land on the Ohio River in what is now the state of West Virginia. And he also had land in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and in New York. Now, in his will, he provided that his highest priority was to provide for his dearly beloved wife, Martha. Uh, but he also remembered certain other close and distant family members in his will. He pr provided for uh, distribution of certain of his land holdings to some of his relatives. He forgave certain debts of others, including debts that were owed to him by his late brother's estate and by his late brother-in-law's estate. His second priority in the will was to provide for the emancipation, care, and education of his slaves. Although he wanted to emancip emancipate all of his slaves, he felt that that would be too difficult, too painful, too, too um, uh, complicated because of the fact that many of the slaves that were on the property at, at uh, Mount Vernon had previously belonged to Martha Washington's first husband, uh, Daniel Park Custis. And Washington's slaves had, had intermarried with some of these other slaves, and so he felt that it would be too painful to to emancipate some, but not all. But he did direct that all of the slaves would be emancipated upon his wife's death. Uh, he provided for the emancipation of one of his slaves, though. That was William Lee, who was his faithful servant during the Revolutionary War. And he provided specifically for his emancipation and to, provided financially for him for the rest of his life. He provided for the other slaves that were on the property uh, to take care of those that were too ill or too old to work or too young to support themselves. Uh, he provided for educational provisions for some of the younger, for the younger slaves to the age of 25 and that they were to be taught to read, write, and to pursue an occupation. Uh, he also had aspirations for the newly formed country. He wanted to provide stocks to finance the establishment of a school for educating orphans. He also wanted to establish a university in the District of Columbia, but that unfortunately never uh, materialized. But he did give 100 shares in the James River Company for the use and benefit of Liberty Hall Academy, which later became known as Washington and Lee Uni University. Now this will was signed originally on July 9 in 1799, about six months before he died. The will was written on 15 sheets of specially prepared paper that had his watermark on it. And after he died, the will was probated in 1800 on January 20th uh, by the, in the clerk of court in Fairfax County. And it remained in the Fairfax County Courthouse for all time since then, with the exception of a brief period of time during the Civil War, when it was removed to the uh, Confederate capital of Richmond as federal troops were approaching Fairfax, and they wanted to make sure that the will was, was pr properly pr safeguarded and provided for until after the war ended. The will was returned to Fairfax County after the war and it still remains there to this day. As I mentioned, you can look at the actual text of the will on mountvernon.org and there are printed copies available that you can purchase or, uh, or review. I've even found them on Amazon, if you can believe that. You can read Washington's will on your Kindle. I hope you've enjoyed this video on George Washington's will. I'm Steve Warrell, Georgia State Plan.